Craig Shirley is the author of Rendezvous with Destiny, Ronald Reagan and the Campaign that Changed America. He's president of Shirley and Bannister Public Affairs as well. Craig, good to see you today. Hi, Shannon. How are you? I am very good. Now, I know that you've written in depth on the president. Uh, give us an explanation for what was going on during that uh, apartheid debate. And I haven't seen the movie, but is it accurate? Well, I've seen the movie, and, and it, it, it's accurate to the extent that Reagan opposed the uh, sanctions. It's not ac accurate to the extent as to why he opposed the sanctions. Uh, is that it was a very tricky situation. Everything in the Reagan administration and, and his presidency has to be judged in the context of the Cold War. We are at uh, we are in a Cold War engaged with what he called an evil empire. Uh, the only strongly uh, anti-communist nation on the African continent was South Africa, but they also had a policy of apartheid, which we found equally repugnant. Uh, the sanctions uh, would have hurt, uh, according to what Reagan's briefings, uh, his aides told him, would have hurt the, the least uh, affluent among in, in South Africa at the time, who were the, the uh, blacks there. Uh, and as actually the, the Zulu tribe, representing uh, six million South African blacks, was vehemently opposed to the sanctions. Uh, uh, Chief Budalesi told uh, President Reagan and told uh, P uh, members of Congress, don't impose sanctions on South Africa because they're, they're not going to work. And when, Joseph, when, uh, when Mandela came to uh, power, one of the first things he asked for was for the sanctions to be lifted, lifted because they were hurting the economy of South Africa. So it's a very complex issue, and they present it in a very simplistic fashion. Well, and, and even uh, President Reagan himself, when challenged about his issue on race decades ago, said that when he was uh, governor in California, he appointed more right. African Americans uh, to positions than all of the previous governors combined. And those That's closest right. to yeah. him say that he did uh, have a good record on that front. Um, but there are also yeah. things in the movie that, that regard uh, the butler there, uh, seen um, by the actress uh, playing Nancy Reagan, inviting him to a state dinner, that uh, apparently in the movie it's made as if he feels that he's a prop at the center, that he's just there to show that there's some kind of diversity, that the Reagans cared about that, but maybe they really didn't. Um, but apparently there was nothing in the writings of this particular gentleman that said he ever had a bad time there or felt like he was being used. In fact, the only comment I saw was that he was excited that he had champagne that night. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. I, I saw the movie. And you're exactly right, is, is that he, uh, in, in a soliloquy, says to himself that he felt uh, out of place at the dinner and that everything in his life went downhill after he, after he attended the dinner. There's a lot of things. I mean, I'm, I'm all for historical fiction. Uh, John Jakes did it with, in the 1970s with, uh, about the Re American Revolution. And we've had historical fiction in this country from the time of uh, Washington Irving. Uh, but when you take a complex issue like South Africa and presented as if Reagan was somehow racist, it's unfair to the subject matter and to the subject of that portrayal. There are other things, too, that, are, that uh, aren't quite uh, right, like him giving the butler cash to mail to people. There's no r uh, record of Reagan doing that. Reagan wrote checks to people who would write him letters when they were hurting during the uh, recession of the early 80s. He would write them checks, but they would normally go to his secretary to be mailed to those people. Uh, there's before In that scene that you showed with uh, uh, Mrs. Reagan talking to the butler, uh, right before that, she's seen in the movie talking to an aide and sounds like she's planning on her own a summit with Moscow as if Mrs. Reagan was somehow involved in foreign policy, and she, that's ridiculous. All right. Well, when these movies are made, regardless of the topic, uh, when there are politics involved, um, a lot of times the movies will say, it's, there's creative license here. It's based on a story. It's not factual. But the people who right. go to see them don't always get that disclaimer. I mean, they think that, you know, if it's on the screen, it's been vetted, it's factual. Right. And the thing, too, is that you have to go to motive, Shannon, because the screenwriter for this movie did write uh, the, screen, the uh, teleplay or the screenplay for uh, Game Change, which was a lot of people thought was grossly unfair to uh, Sarah Palin. And he also wrote the screenplay for uh, Recount, which, again, a lot of people thought was a retelling of the history of the Florida Recount in a way that made the Bush forces look very bad and, and devious and the Gore forces look uh, you know, saintly and, and, and good, and that that wasn't really what really happened in Florida or happened in the case of uh, Sarah Palin. So you do have to go to motive when it comes to Hollywood and movies. Well, and as more and more people increasingly get uh, their information from entertainment sources, uh, yes. you do have to peek behind the curtain and see what's going on, good or bad. Craig Shirley, thank you very much. Always good to see you. Thanks, Shannon.